That's a lot of reps, 50 reps after five minutes. I bet you they're tired by now. Oh, oh, you're doing good and you're ready for the next section? Great. All right, so just talking about being comfortable, uh, the inside of the arm, it's a little sensitive, all right? Some say it's the worst spot to get a tattoo. The bag being against that inside of the arm can be a little, uh, well, it, it can be a little uncomfortable from time to time. Uh, your skin does eventually get used to this happening. Of course, if you're sweating, uh, the bag doesn't stick to you. It becomes a lot looser and you don't have any unnecessary chafing, okay? Uh, also, you can wear a long sleeve shirt, but trust me, you're, you're gonna wanna adapt your skin quickly. So no sleeves, get your arms used to it. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our hinge uh, and oh, I love this part, I love it, I love it. Going back to our gable grip, uh, we're gonna practice the same hinge we did with our rope. All right, so Serena, holding gable grip and we're gonna go logo facing away. Very good. And you know, Serena, face the camera. So Serena swings a lot of mace and it's very important that we keep the knuckle even with the hand. In this case, we're going to bring the elbows down and make a teepee if you can. Yeah, and you can see that there is a lot bigger bend in the bag. All right, Serena, go ahead and face me. Okay, where is all the water? It is in the horns, all right? We've got horns down in this position. Serena is gonna go into a nice hip hinge. So taking the hips, tilting them back, broadening the chest and driving the hips up and back. Guys, concentrate on what's happening to the water. It's leaving the horns, hold it there, and going into the leveled position. As Serena comes up, nice and calm, the horns fill up. Now this is beautiful. If the horns are evenly filled, then we know we have a very nice even hinge. However, if our hinge is off and we stand up, well, all the water is in one side, all right? So level out the playing field with a level. Serena, let's get a couple more hinges and I want you to try and keep the water even between both sides. Static, taming the water, keeping it still, still highlighting the strength of the vessel. Are we talking about Serena or the bag? Which one is the vessel? Well, I think in this case, both. All right, and I'm just gonna let your arms cool down for a second. We'll take that away from you. Guys, this is, <laughs> it's, a little bit of, it's a little bit of a workout, um, squeezing that bag. All right, so what do we cover? We covered being still. And it got to a point where things started to become fluid. It was a really neat mixture of the water staying moving and staying level. Next, we're going to make the water crash. We're going to energetically fire our hips just like we did with our knee on belly position, okay? So, but let's mix things up. Let's go fluid and then dynamic. Let's go flow and crash, flow and crash. What you will focus on when you're doing the hinge in our first, in our first module is keeping the water still. Now, we want to make the water do a wave. Now this is unique to the person experiencing the movement. It looks a little bit different from the outside than it does from the inside. Once I get my bag and I power on my gable grip, bending my bag, when I go into my very, very nice hinge, it's nice and smooth. From there, I'm gonna shoot my hips forward and try and get the water to do a full rotation around the top of the bag. As I sit back, the water sits into my hips, making my hinge get a little bit more room. From there, I use that tension, I fire my hips, I exhale. Now you see how my chin is into the bag? Guys, a lot of us have been told by our coaches time and time again, pull your neck back. If I put the bag in a position where my chin is against it, I don't have to concentrate on that. 
exhale violently, try to get the water to move around. You wanna give it a go? All right. Very good. Hey, excellent grip. Elbows down a little bit more. Boom, looks good. We're gonna hinge back nice and smooth. Serena's got her chin up against the bag, reinforcing her structure. Yep, exhale. Make that water touch the top of the bag. There it goes. Big exhale, big hips. Three more. Up. Up. Last one. Boom, time. Did you see the, war the water cartwheel? All right. So from the outside, you can definitely see the water touch the top. So as a coach, we want the water to hit the top of the bag. Because the bag, if you think about it, if you think about it, it is moving back and up. And it's almost making a very small circle, like an oval circle, getting the water to transition. <sighs> feeds right into the next, okay? Serena, uh, we're gonna give one last rep of this. And I just want you to move as fast as safely possible. I want you to exhale violently, <laughs> squeeze the bag as you go, and pop your hips forward with authority. Good job. You see that? She put the logo facing the way. Good grip. Got the gable grip in there. Serena, we're gonna hit 10 reps. Here we go. 10, nine, eight, seven. Move with the water. Six, five, Four, make some waves. Three, two, and one. Time. Guys, hey, super easy. Guys, that's where, you know, it really, it really gives you great feedback. Um, as, even though Serena was thrashing the water around, her movement was so fluid that you could hear the crash, but it, but it was controlled. So, uh, you know, just beautiful, beautiful stuff. All right, hey, we're gonna put one more thing in here. And we just talked about how the spine, when mixed with the bag in our gable grip, actually it is supported by the bag all the way up into our C-spine. Our chin is no longer in front of us, but in a position you know, that it should be in for this type of exercise. We're gonna go ahead and do a couple uh, different squats. Guys, your homework for the hinge work, super easy. We're gonna go 10 sets of 10. You're gonna do three of those in a static form, three of those in a fluid form, and then the last four, I want you to really go for it, right? Really create some waves. So think of it as a power scale going up. You've got 10 sets of 10. They're gonna make some sweat doing that. All right, and then our uh, last bit of this section, we're going to go into a squat. Going into our gable grip, firming the spine up with the bag by compressing the bag into, we have a couple different squats we can do here. Now, since the bag is in front of me versus behind, I'm gonna have more of a vertical squat. Yeah, I'm gonna be leaning for it a bit, but I'm going to do everything I can to stay vertical. Had the, back, the bag been on my back, I would want to have more of an angled squat. So we can definitely do both, but is the bag in front of me or behind me? It's in front. So therefore, when I squat, I'm going to do my best to stay vertical. Now, I'm gonna widen my stance to wherever I can be successful on getting my hips directly underneath me. All right, I'm gonna stand sideways for you guys. I've got my gable grip. I firmed up my spine with the bag. Proud chest, chin's in the right position. Feet are out wider than shoulders. My pelvis wants to go behind me. I'm going to keep it in my neutral posture. Exhale and drive straight down. Being very static. Easy. All right, Serena, give it a go. 
All right, Serena, we're going to challenge you a bit on this one, and you guys at home. Let's go ahead and hit your vertical squat. I'm going to give a couple cues if needed. Feet are wider than the shoulders. We drive the knees out, but towards the toes. That way we can stay in safe knee alignment. We keep the hips tucked under us, but we're not tilting our pelvis too far forward. It's staying just behind us. On the way up, we close the knees and we drive the hips in. We have some very concentrated breathing and you can tell Serena is looking to see if any of the water is moving. All right, Serena, let's just do some squats. Up, good. And so you don't hear the water sloshing from side to side. This is a very good fluid squat. Serena, let's just have a guess. This is part of training. Can you predict what is next? We're gonna make the water crash. What does that look like? A jump squat. Let's see. Wow. <laughs> so adding a jump to your squat can definitely increase the difficulty and can make the water crash. All right, Serena, here's what we got. Three squats, slow. Three fast, four jump. I'll cue them for you. All right, guys, hey, this is gonna be your exercise at home. And yeah, you're doing 10 sets of 10 in the same fashion as our hinge. Three slow. Wide feet, hips underneath. Nice and vertical. Patient on the breathing. Guys, you got 10 sets, so make sure you really take it easy. Three flowing reps, trying to keep the water calm but staying fluid in motion. Yep back down and last four let's make a little bit of a jump four three two one <laughs> boom Serena I would say that that is in fact a flow sure it was the same movement but doing it three different ways is you have to change the way you're thinking and that was a beautiful beautiful set Serena we've got one more section that we're going to deal with the gable grip and we will see you guys there. Make sure you finish your homework and stay with your workbook. See you in the next section.